Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's time for another Impact Weekly. We have a brand new question here that we're going to dig into right away. Here it comes. So this person is saying the following. I'm looking to move more accounts that are not paying us enough to a low touch motion. Any suggestions on how to do that? <laughs> so that's this week's question. Ah, uh, a lot to unpack from this one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, these uh, to start off with, I think maybe we should just. Uh, a lot of people talk about low touch, tech touch, high touch. Maybe we should just open up with that and see, uh, yeah, break that down. What what do we mean here? If you're brand new into this area of customer success and you hear these uh, touches uh, being thrown around, thrown around, uh, what do we mean? Right. And where does yeah. it come from? Well, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, gather around, kids. Let's let's have a history <laughs> discussion. Um, okay, so if you've if you've read anything on customer success, uh, you, you probably have seen. People talk about uh, high touch, low touch, tech touch. Uh, it's probably been presented in some sort of a pyramid uh, where you have at the at the bottom of the pyramid, you have sort of low touch, which is going to be, you know, the, you know, the majority of your customers. And then as you move up into uh, to high touch, it's going to be sort of at the top of the pyramid because that's going to be, f- you know, s- fewer customers, maybe, you know, from a revenue standpoint, those are mm. those are valuable customers, but they're going to be fewer. Is kind of how that whole pyramid thing um, was was designed. Um, you know, I, I don't know exactly where it came from. Um, I have some some theories, but I know <laughs> I, I know that at some point uh, I, I sort of feel responsible for um, for for promoting this because probably back in somewhere between 2014, 2016, uh, this was something that we, that I was involved with heavily promoting, uh, mm. this concept. Um, yeah. now in fairness, we didn't really have a better way of talking about this, that we didn't know a lot about, uh, sort of the, the nuance of, yeah. uh, you know, how to really properly segment customers. So, you know, I'm not saying it was wrong back then. Um, but it was, it's definitely not the way we need to be looking at things today, but unfortunately it is still very much in the zeitgeist. It is very much uh, still out there. And, and the other thing is sort of the, you take this high touch, low touch, tech touch, and generally it's mapped directly to how much people pay us. Right. So if they pay us a lot, they get the high touch. And if they pay us very little, they get the low touch and right Hmm. there, we can say that 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 this doesn't work that this yeah. this, this, this doesn't apply to modern customer success because we know that some customers who pay us a lot really don't want what we would give them under this quote unquote high touch model mm. they would rather us leave them alone and on the flip side we have customers that don't pay us very much who um, <clears throat> who would really prefer or need something that looks more like high touch or something you know in that in that middle tier of of touch yeah. levels. So the history yeah. lesson is that this, this was brought about in the very, very early days of customer success, probably brought over from things, even pre customer success account mm-hmm. management or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, and here we are literally going on almost 10 years and mm-hmm. this concept really needs to just be sort of put away. <laughs> we need to yeah. get away from the high touch tech, touch, low touch, but that's the, that's the history lesson. Yeah. Um, and then we can talk about how we should be looking at this and yeah. and all of that. But there you go. No, but I think, yeah, it's good to put it in context. And uh, I guess the strength of the model is that it's very simple, right? So that's why probably it's still hanging in there. Uh, but let's, let's, sure. um, let's, we will get back to how, how you can use 
some of these concepts uh, and update them for where we are right now. Um, because I also think one of the points you made there is that you, you segment based on revenue and then you are back to a more of a, like a cost center mindset yes. for customer success. How can we spend <laughs> our resources? How can we minimize uh, our spend rather than looking at how can we grow our customer base? Uh, so I think that's one of the big mind shifts to to look into uh, when, when, when you set up, set up this. Um, um, and if we if we kind of move move along here, what what do we see? What other type of mistake? If we start, if you try to implement this, and you you start off here, what what can happen? What where do we go wrong here? Right. Well, so go back to the question. So I'm looking to move accounts. I'm looking to move more accounts that are not paying us enough. Yeah. I'm looking to move those to a tech touch motion. So I I this is not. This is not an uncommon question, all right, right? or this is not an uncommon uh, scenario that comes up. We have customers that don't pay us very much. Um, perhaps there's a lot of churn in that customer segment, mm. right? Because yes, they, these are these are transient customers that come in and, and leave, and um, you know whatever, right? There, there's we all know that that quote unquote that segment. Um, and, and so there's, there's some, some things that we think that are going on there. And so, you know, they don't pay us very much. They're not, they're not profitable. Um, you know, especially if we're trying to give them that quote unquote high touch experience. So we want to move them, uh, to something else. Well, if you're not taking into consideration the customer's appropriate experience, then, then none of this really matters. Do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> but just expect probably um, some bad things to happen when you do that. And let's talk about why that is. Um, yep. Customers have an appropriate experience. Okay. That is the experience that they need to have in order to feel successful. So let's take even a further step back and talk about yes. customer success. What exactly. is customer success? <laughs> let's, let's define it. Customer success is when your customers achieve their desired outcome through their relationship with you leading them to stay longer, buy more, and advocate for you, right? So, so desired outcome is the thing that our customer needs to achieve mm. so that they will, uh, you know, basically become better customers, stay longer, buy more, and advocate for us. Desired outcome has two pieces. It's mm. their goal, which is honestly the thing that most people kind of focus on, most companies focus on. We just want to make sure our customers are achieving their goal, although even then it's not... <laughs> there's. We could go down a whole rabbit hole there, but the other part of desired outcome is appropriate experience. So in order to achieve your full desired outcome, you have to, you have to both achieve your goal, but you have to do it in a way that is, is appropriate. The experience that you're getting is appropriate. If a customer only achieves their goal, but they don't have an appropriate experience, they're not going to feel successful. Right. And that's either going to lead to full churn it's, it's, if they don't leave entirely, it's, it's likely to lead to contraction. Hmm. If it's certainly not going to lead to more expansion, you know, they're not going to bring you into, into their, you know, further into their company if the experience that they're getting is inappropriate. So if you decide a customer is not paying us enough, so we're going to move them to this different engagement tier. Yeah. Um, you could be violating their appropriate experience. Right, and if you violate that that appropriate experience by moving that customer to a low touch motion, and you move them away from you know a synchronous engagement model that they that they need to feel successful, then you know, like I said, expect bad things w with that cohort because right. you're violating their appropriate experience. Like you're not giving them what they need to feel successful, so you're probably not gonna. It's probably not gonna work out as as yeah. as well as you might hope. I hope it, I hope it works out great, but I'm just yeah. saying like, be aware, be, be manage expectations properly around that. If you're being told this is what you need to do and, yeah. and you know, this could end up being a problem. Cool. And, and appropriate experience, maybe just to, to help people here as well. If you're, if you haven't heard of that concept before, can we give some examples, uh, what, what that is? Um, uh, and, uh, Maybe uh, put some context on that so so they can, yeah, 
apply it sure, to it's, their own, it's, for their own product and their own customers. Absolutely. So essentially, a appropriate experience boils down to interaction type and frequency. Yeah. So different customers are going to have a need to have different types of interactions with you and to do so at, at you know, different on a different cadence, different frequency. Um, the interaction types are going to vary from synchronous to asynchronous, which means they're, you know, some customers are going to have to have more, more synchronous things like meetings, you know, literally one-on-one meetings yeah. with you. Um, some, some customers don't need those one-on-one meetings. They're, they're more comfortable with more um, asynchronous communication, uh, things done via email, uh, yeah. loom videos, you know, maybe more deflection to self-service modalities of, you know, things that they can look up on their own. All customers are probably going to have uh, a, a mix of those things, a mix of asynchronous and, and synchronous engagement, the ratio of which is going to be determined by what is their appropriate experience. So this is, you have to get to know your customers, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're, you have to understand you know, these, these types of customers all have a shared appropriate experience. They all have, you know, I can group these customers together because they all have, uh, a, you know, an appropriate experience that that's more weighted on the one-on-one engagement side of things. They're, they're more heavily mm-hmm. weighted towards synchronous. And these customers over here, I can group them together because they don't need as much synchronous. They're really more of the async Group. And then maybe I have a third group that's sort of, you know, the, the ratio of async and, and synchronous is more even. Yeah. Right. Now, all of this, not to go do, too far down this, this rabbit hole, but um, a lot of this also comes down to when you're, when you're, if you're head of customer success and you're thinking about this, like, how do you um, have the right people in, in the right roles? Well, when you're thinking about a coverage model, which is really the yeah. deployment of your resources, um, understanding the this AX or appropriate experience based customer segmentation will really help ensure that you have the right people in the right places. But ultimately uh, we just need to know what, what is the appropriate uh, interaction uh, modality and frequency for these customers. Yeah. And if we violate that, if we go against what is appropriate for them, then, then this is where you get customers who, who become, um, you know, not emotionally happy with you, even if they're achieving their goal, yeah. uh, they become less satisfied with you. So when you're talking about customer satisfaction and things like that, you're really talking that that really starts to be how you, you know, the, the measurement of appropriate experience. Yeah. It just tells you whether or not, you know, are they are they having the an experience that is uh, well appropriate for them while they're achieving their goal. And again, this is this is how you can have customers that achieve their goal, but still churn or still, you know, contract. And you're like, how is a customer who's actually getting value? I know they're getting value. I know they're achieving Mm -hmm. their goal. Why would they leave? Well, you didn't really take into consideration whether or not you're delivering their appropriate experience. And it really is that important. Customers will leave. And, you know, I always, you know, I, you, you know, I say this all the time, have, have you ever had an experience where you've used a product and you got what you needed out of it? Like you, you yeah, achieved yeah. your goal, <clears throat> whatever you, you got the result you were looking for, but something felt off. It just, yeah. you know, so, so you sought out a different product and you found a product or a service that, that gave you not only the result you needed, but like everything else felt right. If that's ever been a situation that you've, you've had. And, and I, I'm sure I can't think of any, anybody who probably hasn't had that experience, then, then you have experienced an inappropriate experience and then you sought out an appropriate experience. So, you know, from your customer's point of view, is that something that they might be going through as well? So it all comes back to making sure that you're delivering an appropriate experience. And if you choose to move a customer to a touch level to a, a particular engagement motion or however you want to frame it, uh, that is not in line with their appropriate experience. I'm just saying like that might not end well. It might not, it might not have the positive result you think it's going to. No. 
And definitely the, the appropriate experience does not uh, necessarily go hand in hand with uh, the revenue you get from that customer. I mean, once I, once I, <laughs> once I learned that, that's when this whole tech touch, high touch thing fell apart because yeah. you just, you realize, and, and honestly, it was with the bigger customers where and I can't remember exactly the, you know, exactly when this happened or, or who, you know, who the customers were or whatever. But I remember very distinctly the feeling of, of going, oh my gosh, we're trying to force essentially a high touch experience mm. on these customers who pay us a lot yeah. because simply because they pay us a lot yeah, and they're resisting they're they're pushing back. They don't mm. want to have meetings. Like, what's going on here? What are we doing wrong? Right. You know, are we not positioning the meetings correctly or the blah, blah, blah? No. It's just that these big customers have the resources, have the experience. <laughs> they didn't need us. And we were trying to force an experience on them that was just inappropriate. Mm. Like, they didn't need it. And we thought they we had to do this because they paid us a lot, right? They they deserve to have us, you know, <laughs> constantly engaged <laughs> with them, yeah. and 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 they were like, L listen. And so when we when we had you know, like a real conversation with them, they they were like, listen, we don't need that. You guys are good. We just need to make sure you're there if if we need you. Um, and the trade off was okay, cool, but we're gonna we're gonna meet once a quarter to make sure that everything is going right, and you know, make sure you're, everything's still on track. And they said, that's fair, right? So you have to, it, you have to understand that not all customers, you know, are the same. And so here were some customers that paid us a lot of money that right. we could give them an experience that really looked like the, the low touch experience that, yeah. that customers that didn't pay us very much were getting. Once I had that experience and that realization, like everything changed and that whole model just broke. It just, yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. And then you start realizing, okay, it goes the other way too. We have small customers, customers that don't pay us very much, mm. who actually need a lot more from us because they don't have the experience, they don't mm. have the expertise, they don't have the resources internally, yeah. so they need a lot more from us, but they don't right. pay us very much. No. So what do we do? We take what the question is here we say those customers, we're going to move them to that low touch or that tech touch motion. Yeah. And but, but yeah, potentially there's a lot of missed opportunity there. Um, I mean, so much. Because uh, my experience is that sometimes, I mean, if you, if you uh, invest, if you like, uh, our precious or our, our know-how and, and put a lot of customer success on that, that cohort that maybe are small right now for us in terms of revenue, they can grow. And what we also know is that uh, if the customer stays for a very long time, that's a, there's a lot of value in that for us, but they are also potentially advocates and, and referrals and they move, they change companies and they join another one and, and maybe that's a bigger one and they will bring in us on that one. So yes. I think this is where the growth mindset of customer success uh, makes makes all the difference in how you prioritize and how you how you view this 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 customer. I love that. Yeah. I mean, that's what you say all the time is just, you know, it's sort of like the, the very first uh, check. Are you looking at this as a cost center? Or are you looking at this as a growth mechanism? Yeah. And if it's a cost center, then you look at these customers that don't pay you very much in the moment and you say, I can't afford to give them anything more. So we're going to, we're going to move them to this low touch or this tech touch motion. And there we go. But, but to your point, if, if we're looking at these customers and saying, look, if we, if we invest and that's what it mm -hmm. is, you know, if we invest something with them and, and we truly believe that this is going to work, <laughs> right. I mean, like this is going yeah. to pay off long-term then, you know, it, it makes sense to invest a, a little more in them and, mm -hmm. and keep them around longer. And, you know, I, hopefully while they're staying around for a longer, you know, longer duration, uh, mm. we're actually getting them to increase spend over that extended life lifetime. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this is where you get into exponential growth in account value over their or, or, or exponential growth in customer lifetime value. 
um, when you 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 actually do put in the effort. Um, so yeah, I love I love that, and, and it's always good to have you frame it that way. To always go back to that: Are we looking at this as a a cost center, or is this a growth mechanism, a profit center? And yeah. you know, right there, that's that will that that's that's everything because if you go one direction versus the other it's going to send you down completely different paths yeah let's let's also i think we 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 kind of uh, identified how to think of this in one way uh, the other part of the question was also to i mean we we don't want to shoot down uh, messaging here or and having a like a what what was called a tech touch or like having a good um good communication uh, that's not necessarily uh, meetings but maybe we should address that as well and, and talk a little bit about how how you go about that because i think that's also something this person asking the question is looking to do here to be to to, to do a better communication um to, to the customers as well right yeah i mean i i just wanted to make sure that we really laid out there that there's a risk in doing this if it violates their appropriate experience. Okay. So I just, you know, that was the yeah, main thing, yeah. but assuming that this is, this is the right direction and uh, that, that everything's fine. Then, then yeah. How do we actually do this? Well, I think we need to understand that, that um, you know, moving or in, in incorporating, let's put it that way, incorporating um, asynchronous, modalities of engagement. Um, so things that are not one-on-one -on -one meetings. So, you know, moving to channels like email, um, or, or, you know, using loom videos, uh, to, to send, you know, personalized messages, but you know, that are more engaging, yeah. um, even deflecting to self-service, all of these right. things have a place regardless of, um, really regardless of, of, of what your overall ratio of async to sync is going to be. Again, you're never, ever, I, I mean, maybe at the very, at the very lowest uh, engagement level, you know, you might, you might not have any one-on-one -on -one synchronous engagement, but, but generally speaking, you're going to have a mix of async and mm -hmm. sync. It's just what the ratio is, you know, uh, that that's going to depend on what the, the the shared appropriate experiences of this customer segment. Yeah. Um, but so even with segments where you have, let's say, you know, you have really strategic customers where you have like an account team assigned to to them, um, it's you know a dedicated pod of resources or whatever. Um, mm. You're still going to be using email to engage them. Um, yeah. Beyond be, between meetings, you're still going to have. Um, like in self-service things that you can point them to in the meantime. Um, so you have to, you have to bring those things in. And I think, um, you know, you can use automated messaging, you can use templates and you can use um, things like that, that to, to sort of act as the glue between those synchronous engagements. Yes. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's just, um, you know, you have to make sure that you understand ultimately what you're trying to achieve here with the customer. Yeah. And, and then you have to understand what the right way to, to communicate with your customers would be in, in, in the moment. Um, you have to make sure that you're in, engaging the appropriate stakeholders. Right. Um, you have to make sure that you're, you're positioning things correctly. So whatever messaging you're using, but really, whatever whatever modality of engagement you're do, you're using, you have to understand what you're trying to say. So, what what is the objective of the, yeah. of the communication? Who the right recipient is? Who the right sender is? Um, you know um, that kind of stuff. So that's really important. So you can totally leverage, um, you know, m messaging, sort of automated messaging infrastructure here. Um, you just have to understand the really what you're trying, what the right, what the, the yeah. thing is you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So segment and segmenting is of course key because otherwise it's going to be too general and you're not going to, I mean, it's not going to be of value for anyone. It's going to be just a general blast. Uh, so, right. so I think, I mean, that's 
I guess step one there to to um, to to be be relevant and to really uh, yeah reach reach the stakeholders you want. Yeah, I mean the the one thing that I talk about a lot is what what the right kind of personalization is. Mm. So when we talk about automated messaging, you know, people talk about well, we want to make it as as personalized as possible, and you know, often that's like putting their first name in the message or something. Yeah, and it's like that's that's not that's not actually personalization. Dear um, Lincoln, exactly. Yes, I hope this email finds you well. Um, don't ever say that, please, <laughs> ever. Um, but but basically, look, I would rather get a message from you that doesn't acknowledge me, that doesn't say my name, um, mm. but it's the right message at oh, the yeah. right time. Mm. And, and I'm the right person to receive that message, and it's coming from the right the right person. So right message, right time, right recipient, right sender. Yeah, that is personalization that matters. Right. So, and what I mean there is, you know, sometimes you as the CSM may not be the right person to be sending this message. Maybe it needs to come from an executive on your side. Maybe it needs to come from a, a TAM, a technical account manager on your side, mm. because the recipient on their side is maybe someone more technical or an executive. And, and so we just need to be strategic about how we develop our engagement, um, you know, yeah. really just how, how, we, how we're building out that engagement model. But more than anything, the two most important aspects there are right message at the right time. Right. That is, that's the thing that will either cause your, mes- your, your, your messages to resonate or cause them to be ignored and it doesn't mm. take too many messages that are off base, even if they say their first name. <laughs> um, it doesn't take too many messages that are just completely off off base or, or that miss the mark to teach your customers to ignore you. Yeah. And and so if you are going to be moving a lot more to this, you know, to leveraging um, asynchronous engagement, especially through email and stuff like that, you have to be very deliberate in the way you send these messages um, because you can't afford to have your, your messages go unread. You can't afford to have your customers ghost you. Mm. Um, if you are relying on email to engage, you better get everything uh, as right as possible. So yeah, don't blast. Important. Don't, no, you know, don't, don't, gen, no generic email blasts. Like you said. And I think the second, the, the, the follow up to that one is of course, how do we, how can we measure this? If I have a big team now, yeah. And that leads us into, I think, call to action. And and here, I think, the, it's a big difference having automated emails going to your customers versus having automated email going to leads or prospects and so on. Yeah, it's really it's really interesting. Um, if you look up anything to do with with writing better emails, uh, creating sequences, things like that, almost everything you see out there is going to be either sales. And, and honestly, borderline spamming or mm. or marketing, which is yeah. you know, just blasting newsletters. There's very little out there on on creating um, in, essentially engagement messages. You know, where yeah. where we already have a relationship with a customer, and we just need to get them to do the next thing. Yeah. And so, I mean, I I I talk about this a lot. Um, and and so, to your point, we need to have a a call to action. But again, most of the time people think a call to action is, uh, from a marketing standpoint, you know, we're, we're trying to get them to, you know, attend a webinar or something. Well, just think of a call to action is whatever we need them to do next could be, it Mm. could be clicking a link to go take an action in, in, inside the app. It could just be responding to me to start a conversation. Mm. And, and so this is where we, you know, the measurement of engagement, what we call engagement rate, is really the measurement of of any of the 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 um, actions that are being taken off of our emails, whether it's clicking a link or starting, you know, just replying and starting a conversation. Which mm. right there, that differs from um, sales and marketing. Um, it's kind of a mix, really, of of the two, if you if you think about it. But yeah. we we basically want to know, you know, how many people are um, are taking the action that we ask them to take in right. our email. And, exactly. and, and it goes even further than that. It's not just, I don't want them to just click a link from the email to go into the app. 
I mm. want to know that the thing that I that they needed to do inside the app was actually done. Done. Right. Or or the conversation that we started because I got them to reply to my email resulted in an action the the, the ultimate action being taken. Yeah. That's how we know whether or not we're we're engaging. And that's that's what we call engagement rate. And so it's it's, you know, how many how many people for for this call to action that was sent out to you know to everybody? How many people actually yeah. took that action? But that's something we need to be need to be looking at um, when we're trying to move, or or not trying to just move customers to, you know, more of a tech touch motion, but just trying to incorporate more of of you know sort of automated or 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 otherwise you know using email to yeah. to act as the glue between our, our more synchronous engagement, um, whatever it is, however we're using this, that's how we need yeah. to be thinking about it. But ultimately it comes down to really understanding your customer and making sure that you are sending messages that resonate. So right message, right time becomes yeah. absolutely critical. Cool. I think we, we covered a lot. So let's help this person and everyone listening. Uh, what are the three things that they should take, take with them here? So I'll start. So I think uh, number one here is to segment your customers uh, with a customer success growth mindset, not yes. minimizing cost. I think that's number one. I, I mean, I love that. Like if, if we just stopped right there, I think that's that's going to move you into a really good place. Okay, so that's good. So I think the the my two would be uh, automated messaging is powerful and necessary. Um, you know, you make sure it's personalized in the right way, right message, right time. That's that's the main thing. Make sure what's in it for them is clear, um, and and the call to action is clear. But I would say just make sure the what's in it for them if they take that action is super yeah. clear. I think that's that's something that's often missing. And and finally, just understand that appropriate experience. We didn't really talk about this, but it can change, yeah, and 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 does change. And so you have to pay attention to what's going on with your customers. Um, understand that those things shift. And so what was an appropriate experience, you know, a few years ago certainly mm. is not likely they're the same appropriate experience today. So make sure you understand that your customers are evolving and pay close attention to that and, and, and continue to give your customers whatever their appropriate experience is uh, as they uh, evolve and change and grow with you. Oh, perfect. So that's it. Um, before you leave, just want to give you one thing here. We had Impact Academy, our training programs for customer success, we have added some new programs there. So check those out. Uh, they have some upcoming dates soon here. So check that out on our web. We will have the link here also uh, where we have a podcast. So thanks for listening and see you soon. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.